I'm Ralph Mollis. I'm Rhode Island's Secretary of State. Among my many roles is one to preserve Rhode Island's history and also welcome people to our State House. This is the entrance of the State House, and above the entrance uh, are the words, a lively experiment. And those words are taken from our Royal Charter. Our Charter dates back to 1663. It's the first charter granted to any colony which granted us religious freedom. And so th and that was our lively experiment. And here where we stand, we have our inauguration every four years, and where our general officers are inaugurated under the words, a lively experiment, and under our independent man. This is actually the back of the State House, but used as the main entrance for visitors and uh, people who come to testify in legislation and whatnot. Behind me is a rotunda. Uh, at the rotunda sits the state seal. Uh, for many years, our seal has been the anchor and our motto, hope. To my right is our Gettysburg gun. Actually, when you walk into the State House, whether it's a tour or whether you're just visiting the State House, this is probably my favorite story within the State House, maybe second to the Royal Charter. This Gettysburg gun is an actual cannon that was used in the Battle of Gettysburg in 1863. As Rhode Island soldiers were, were shooting onto the Confederate, the Confederate were, were shooting back, and one of their cannon, the cannonballs hit the muzzle, putting a dent in the muzzle. So as Rhode Island soldiers attempted to fire back onto the Confederate, because there was a dent in the muzzle, the cannonball became enlarged, and it's been like that ever since. Well, when we opened up the State House in 1901, this cannon has been there since we opened the State House. However, in 1962, we found that there were two and a half pounds of live gunpowder within the cannon all these years. So Rhode Island National Guard had to remove the cannon. Uh, they had to safely find a way to remove the two and a half pounds of gunpowder. And for the most part, I guess visitors have been safe ever since. So as we leave this Gettysburg gun, I'm going to turn it over to the governor's office and my colleague, Steve Horahan, who will welcome you to the governor's office and continue with this tour of our magnificent state house here in our capital city of Providence. I just wanted to welcome you to Governor Chafee's um, stateroom. It is the largest and most beautiful room in the governor's suite, which runs from this room to the end of the building. It includes his personal staff, a reception area, and his private office. But the stateroom, the governor's stateroom, is, a, is the site for his press conferences, for his meeting of dignitaries, and it is a very, very beautiful room, as you can see by looking around. McKim, Mead, and White designed the State House. It was built and finished in 1904. The building itself, um, as you can see, is made, up, made out of white Georgia marble. It's repeated in here with details, 24 karat gold leaf in the ceiling and all around the building. And this is the only major room in the uh, building that doesn't have a skylight. Um, the natural light they felt was coming through the big French doors that you see out on the governor's balcony, but also for security. They felt that this, since this is a, a part of the governor's suite, this is definitely a more secure place. So there's only a painted um, blue sky up there instead of a skylight like there is in every other room. The painting that's behind me is a wonderful, wonderful, valuable piece. It is owned um, by the state of Rhode Island, and it was finished in 1802 by a Rhode Islander, Gilbert Stewart. It's one of two portraits. The other one uh, uh, like it is in the East Room of the White House. It is an incredibly valuable piece, but also a beautiful piece. The interesting parts of the points about it is that are rare is that it is a standing portrait of uh, George Washington. Most he is sitting or riding a horseback. It is the head part that you see is the part that's on the dollar bill, um, the American dollar bill. And also, it's a very interesting, fun story, and that was that in 1961, Jackie Kennedy and Buddy Mellon, when they were redoing the White House, tried to buy the portrait from the state of Rhode Island. And uh, the lore has it that they offered a little over a million dollars to the state for the portrait, and we said no, luckily. And so it still is here. It's an incredibly valuable piece, but also a beautiful piece. There's a little fun thing about this room, and that is that um, there is a secret um, staircase somewhere in the suite that um, allows the governor to leave the building without um, being noticed. And it's only been used, as we are aware of, once by a former governor, Bruce Sunland, who used it during the banking crisis in Rhode Island. And during that banking crisis, um, there were picketers and people outside the building um, who were concerned about their money being locked in credit unions. So Governor Sunland used the exit, which um, we, and has not been used that we know of by any other modern governor, and we've not heard of any other use of it. But it is a secret staircase that will take them right out of the building. Right now, we're in the governor's private office. The desk has been used by, uh, by governors as far back as the, the governor's father, which, who was governor in the early 60s. It has carved into it the state seal. And it is a very simple desk, but it is a very, very symbolic of, of especially this governor and the way he likes to do business.
I've been with the governor for, um, uh, for, since the United States Senate. We, we, he was elected in 2000, or actually was appointed in 99, and then elected in 2000 again. He was a Republican. He left the Republican Party in 2007 after leaving the Senate, and has really been a, someone who believes very strongly in compromise, in people getting t along, and feels that the Republican Party that he knew, and that his father knew, and he grew up in, which just doesn't exist any longer. So it's been very important to him and this building to bring people together. This is the House Representatives Chamber. Um, it is a beautiful chamber, as you can see, historic chamber. Um, it is the uh, home of 75 members of the House of Representatives. Gordon Fox is the um, Speaker of the House. He was a speaker in the last term, and he's just been elected again. He has been a, was a very strong supporter, and this has been a, a piece of legislation that is now um, nationally in the news, and that is the legislation that basically changed the pension system in the state of Rhode Island. It was a landmark legislation that both the President of the Senate and the Speaker of the House were behind. It changed the way public um, pensions are funded, and it actually took away some of the benefits that have been promised in the past. It's in the courts now being decided, but it is a model for the rest of the country to look at. Basically what the um, legislation did was it took what was made, uh, uh, the pensions that were existing, and it reduced them, it reduced cost of living increases, and it also changed some of the health benefits. But it was something that from a fiscal point of view, the state of Rhode Island just could not afford to keep going. One of the more interesting um, stories that happened in this room, and, and actually part of the, um, the this chamber, was that um, Theodore Francis Green, who was a um, governor of Rhode Island, but he was, had been a former legislator, was elected in what's referred to in Rhode Island as the bloodless revolution in 1935. As a result of voter fraud and overt voter fraud, there was a change in the ultimate uh, makeup of both the Senate and the House. And in 1935, everything changed in Rhode Island. We had a Democrat-controlled Senate, a Democrat-controlled House, and a governor and lieutenant governor who were both Democrats. Because he had the power and because he felt that he, um, he, he wanted to move um, um, forward, Go um, Governor Francis, Theodore Francis Green went ahead and he basically removed the Supreme Court appointed his own Supreme Court. He changed all of the departments of government, got rid of all the boards and commissions, and he was responsible for setting up the structure that Governor Chafee, when we came into office um, uh, two years ago, that in appointing all the department heads and running the structure, he was responsible in 1935 for making that the way it went. This is the uh, 1663 King Charles Charter that granted Rhode Island the most um, rights of any um, colony in the world. King Charles, as you see in the corner there in the drawing, um, who actually is the depiction of C Captain Hook, is what Captain Hook is based on, because he was known as the Pirate King. Roger Williams and John Clark went from Rhode Island to England and basically stayed there until they were granted a charter that gave them religious freedom, freedom of speech, and other uh, freedoms that were never granted to any other colony. This charter is, is um, 6,500 words. It's the original. It is going to be um, celebrating its 350th anniversary next year. And on that 350th anniversary, we will be moving the charter into a new center, a visitor center here in the State House, where there will be climate controlled, and it will be displayed so that it will be available for people of Rhode Island and people of the world to see um, forever. Um, the, there are several interesting parts of the charter, but the most interesting part and the most quoted part, as you saw on the outside of the building um, when you were coming in, is the line to hold forth a lively experiment that a most flourishing civil state may stand and best be maintained, and that among our English subjects with a full liberty in religious concernments, and that the true piety rightly grounded upon gospel principles. That was really the beginning of religious freedom in America. And it was the reason that Roger Williams came to Rhode Island to get away from the persecution he was feeling from the Puritans in Massachusetts. He, he got King Charles to give him this charter. And the interesting story about that is that when the um, original U.S. Constitution was written, it was ratified by all of the other states except Rhode Island. And Rhode Island refused to ratify the Constitution because it didn't have the freedom of religion in it. The Bill of Rights was put into the Constitution, was attached to the Constitution, and after that, that is when we ratified. But the state of Rhode Island would not ratify the Constitution without the religious freedom piece. And the basic thing was, we had more rights on, under this charter than we would have had on, under the U.S. Constitution without the Bill of Rights. We are in the state senate chamber, and this is a beautiful room, as you can see. If you look around, you'll see that it is a very austere in the design and also in the decoration. At, at a point in, the, in our history, 
the, um, um, the Senate and others um, had basically decorated this room with some gilt, with full color seals. You'll see above the president of the Senate's chair, there are 13 seals of the original 13 colonies with, center, with Rhode Island in the center. When this building was um, restored recently, the, all of the painting was done and all of the um, um, seals and everything were brought back to the original, which was very much one color. These, um, there are 38 members of the Senate. Each of the seats here around the room are for each member of the Senate. Um, the President of the Senate is Teresa Piper Weed of Newport. She is a very, very strong leader, and she is someone who runs a very, very tight um, Senate chamber. In 1922, um, there was a uh, filibuster that took place in this building and in this room, and it was a filibuster by the Democrats. And they were filibustering because they wanted to have a, um, an amendment to the Constitution that gave greater rights to the voters. And they were really working hard on it, and they were filibustering it, and the Republicans got very tired of it. So the story goes that the leader of the Republican Party hired someone to come in to this chamber and actually sit next to this column right here in a chair with what was called bromine, uh, and it was a, basically a jar of bromine gas. And he smashed the bromine gas, which from what we understand was sort of the forerunner to tear gas. It released a noxious, not deadly odor, but a noxious odor that basically cleared the room. All of the Democrats and Republicans left, it broke the filibuster. It was successful. Unfortunately for the Republicans, they were found out they were, they, um, people realized that they had hired this person who did this. So the um, um, story goes that all of the Republican senators moved to Massachusetts to a um, stay in a hotel in Rutland, Massachusetts until the election of the next year. So they were basically out of um, session. The Democrats showed up, but there were no Republicans and they had no quorum. The ultimate fallout from it was that the Democrats did pick up more seats in the um, Senate that year, but the Republicans stayed in control until 1935. We're now standing in the center of the state capitol. It is our dome, and it is a beautiful rotunda, as you can see, decorated for Christmas by um, volunteers on the governor's staff who spent lots of hours out here um, decorating all of the trees and putting the wreaths up and really making this beautiful. Um, the interesting things about the capitol and the dome are that this is the fourth largest unsupported marble dome in the world. Um, for a great little state like Rhode Island, to have the fourth largest is pretty amazing. The other three that are larger than ours are the St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, number two is the Minnesota State Capitol, and the third is the Taj Mahal. It sits on four columns. And the interesting story about the four columns is that they were undecorated until 1944. And in 1944, an artist was um, commissioned to come in and paint each of the columns, and they, are rep they represent commerce, education, literature, and business. And each of the pictures um, and the depictions are all done of a woman, but it's, it, it's the same person. It was the artist's wife. I think he was probably trying to save money, so he basically had the model come in. The only difference with each of those is that the eye color is different in each of the uh, depictions. But you look around the dome and you'll see beautiful, beautiful um, murals and a beautiful sky up in the, in the dome itself. The other thing that um, I love to do is to um, take friends and guests of the governor up into the dome and you can go up through a circular staircase from the third floor of the building right up into the dome to the independent man. And it's one of the most beautiful views in the state of Rhode Island. We're at the highest point in the city of Providence and we basically have the opportunity to see all of the state from um, all the way around.